Once we finish working on our song within Studio One, we can simply press Control and E to bring up the export and mix down window here. Now I'm going to go ahead and escape out of there. If we'd like to export our stems, we can press Control, Shift, and E, and now we have our export stems dialog. But if, what if we'd like to just quickly bounce down an audio event or MIDI event very quickly to our desktop or anywhere else on our computer? Well, this is a pretty simple task. So what we can do is just come to the browser. I'm going to click on the Files tab, and then here I already have my desktop showing here. So you would just navigate, you can come to Files, and then choose your desktop or whatever location you'd like to bounce your files down to. Now here on the first track, I've got this solo. This is just some narration. And if we take a look at the inspector, I do have some effects here, EQ, compression, and analog delay. I put the analog de delay because I wanted it to be obvious that these effects are gonna be rendered down when we perform this action. So we'll go ahead and live and give a listen to this while it's soloed. And we'll go ahead and start off with the synth here. And by default, our mid Okay, so you can hear that delay on there. Now, I'd like to put this on my desktop. Maybe you worked on some narration in Studio One with some processing and you wanna finish in your video editor. What we can do is just click, hold, and drag. I'm gonna hover on the word desktop and we can see that we have a window that pops up here. Now, if you take a look at the top, we have export to desktop and then below that we have WAV file. Now this is just going to export a straight up WAV file with no effects if you leave this selected. If you don't want your effects to be applied, then you'll wanna choose this option. Now the next one that we have is WAV file with rendered insert effects. Now if we want to choose that, I'm still holding my left mouse and I'm just gonna press Alt. Now press and release Alt. Now we switch to WAV file with rendered insert effects. And then below that we have audio loop and we'll take a look at that in just a moment. So now that I've selected WAV file with rendered insert effects, I'll go ahead and release this to the desktop. And then now we can see that this has been bounced down and we can see that here. So I'll go ahead and select this. Let's play that back. And we'll go ahead and start off with the synth here. And by default, our MIDI notes are going to take on the color. Okay, so you can hear those effects definitely being applied. And let's go ahead and move on to our options for exporting MIDI. And after this, we'll take a closer look at that audio loop option within for the audio. Okay, so let's switch over to our next track here. I've got an impact on here and just a little basic pattern that I created quickly for the tutorial. Let's go ahead and give this a listen. And if you take note in the inspector, I do have an effect on here, a surround delay. Okay, so you get the idea. Now, we're gonna use the same action. I'm gonna click, hold, and drag this event to my desktop, the word desktop here. And here we have two options, music loop and MIDI file. If I press Alt, let's change that to the MIDI file. I'll go ahead and release, that's quickly done. Now we can see that on our desktop. Now I'm gonna switch songs over here. Let's right click and refresh. Okay, yeah, actually our MIDI is there. This is the one that we just exported. I'll drag this in. Okay, let's zoom out a bit. Okay, now if I double click on this, we can see we have our MIDI information and if I try to open up an instrument, there's nothing there. So we just have our MIDI data when we use this option for .mid, .mid file. We'll go ahead and right click and remove that out and we'll switch back over to our other song here. Now let's give this another try. Click, hold and drag to our desktop. And now I'm going to use the default selection of music loop. Now keep in mind, I've got a surround delay on here and I'm using the impact. So we'll go ahead and release that. And now let's switch over to our other song. And then now we can see our impact music loop. We'll go ahead and click, hold and drag that into this song. Okay, so now when we open up the inspector, we can see that delay and we can see our impact. So if I play this back, we've got our MIDI loop and the preset or the sounds. We've got our audio effect. 
and in this way I can click hold and drag to take the tempo down or put in whatever tempo I'd like to be. So this is an incredibly flexible option. And if we come over to the browser here, you can see we're on the desktop. And I'm going to right click on this music loop that we just exported and then import it into here. Let's right click on it and we can show package contents. And then now we have this arrow and if we click on that, we can see there's our impact with the surround delay. Okay, and then we've got a part, flak, mid, and music here. Well, I'm looking at what we already exported, excuse me. So we've got our impact with the surround delay, the plugin, and our audio. Because even if we don't import this into the song, when we, let's go ahead and collapse that, when we select this music loop, we can actually audition within the browser without even bringing it, importing it into our song. So we, this is another convenient feature we can preview the music loop before importing it into the song. Now we'll again, let's actually right click and remove track and instrument. We'll pop over to the other song here. Now for our final track, we're gonna take a look at the audio loop option. So I'll go ahead and play this back and we'll go ahead and start off with solo. the Okay, now what I'm gonna do is press D to duplicate this out. And so we've got four discrete events, but I'm gonna click, hold, and drag to select these, and then I'll press G to merge those and create an audio part. So now when I double click on this, we can access the individual parts, the individual events, rather, within this part, But when we're working in the arrange view and we click to select, we just have this one part that we can highlight. So now I'm gonna, as we've done before, click, hold and drag and go to the desktop. Now this time we only have the option to export an audio loop. And that's because it's actually a part that contains multiple MIDI events. So we'll go ahead and release that and that's gonna be exported. We've got clipping, but we won't worry about that for the tutorial. And I just want to explain what the audio loop is. It's a proprietary audio format by Personas. And these are just basically audio parts that are tagged with tempo and key signature information and they're exported with a lossless compression. So. As we've already done before, we'll hop over to our other empty song here, and we can see our drum audio loop here. We'll click, hold, and drag that into this song. And you can see I can click once to select this entire e part, but then if I double click on this, then we can access the individual audio events that are contained within. Okay, so this is how we can go about exporting our audio and MIDI events and the different options that we have available to us. I hope this has been helpful. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one training to speed up your learning curve with Studio One, I do provide that over Zoom. So definitely check out the information in the description of this video or the pinned comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial and thanks for watching.